Ladies and gentlemen of the Shrek Gamer Telecom video, as many of you are aware, HBM2 is going to be the next big thing for graphics, with the new GPUs from both AMD and Nvidia, especially the flagships, really going to be featuring a ridiculous amount of memory and memory bandwidth thanks to HBM2. However, for the higher mid-range cards, it doesn't make sense from either a financial perspective or from the perspective of simply using that amount of memory bandwidth to utilize HBM2. Instead, there needs to be an interim between the traditional GDDR5 and HBM2, and that's where, of course, GDDR5X comes in. Micron have announced that they will be hitting mass production of the memory soon. When is soon? This summer. Now at the moment they are still doing prototyping, they're still doing early samples, however even those early samples are hitting 13 GBPS. Now I know what you're going to say, well how does that compare to what we're running now? Well, pretty damn favourably actually. While the GDDR5X solutions, can we just say 5 and, f and just X? I think that would be simpler, don't you? While the solutions are going to hit at least 14 GBPS and potentially up to 16, compared to the memory bandwidth of just regular GDDR5, which is a mere 8 per DRAM, you can start seeing how there's a massive improvement with the performance already. In fact, it means that we're going to be able to uh, utilize narrower memory bus width, which obviously means that the complexity on the GPU is going to be reduced while still offering more than enough bandwidth to be able to push um, high end graphics cards to their limits. How much? Well, let's say that you were to utilize a 256 bit memory interface, which is not unheard of, it's fairly common. Some cards do go with 384, some 512, but that's when the complexity on the PCB, as well as the actual GPU itself, starts to become quite ridiculous, to be totally honest with you. However, with once again 256 bit memory interface which is pretty standard not too difficult to fit in that number of chips on the pcb or anything like that you're going to be able to put out a ridiculous amount of bandwidth 448 which is still more than the gtx 980 tie can achieve which is using a much larger bus 384 bit there is another benefit however not only do the chips um, put out more bandwidth, but Micron are very, very, very much uh, pointing out that the chips themselves use less power. Now, why is that crucial? Well, it all comes down to the graphics card sucking energy out of the system and, once again, a limited TDP. Now, not only does, of course, power supplies themselves have a finite supply of energy because let's face it not everyone has a nuclear reactor strapped to their PC but having more chips on the actual PCB means that you have to have a more robust cooling method which once again means more space and it becomes a bit messier. Fortunately 5X is going to consume just 70% of the energy compared to uh, regular GDDR5 which starts to snowball when you start having multiple chips across a 256 bit or whatever interface. It's worth noting that that's not to say that GDDR5 is going anywhere, it's not. We're at a really weird point in graphics cards now. We're at the point where, let's say two years ago for the sake of argument, you could have the low end cards which would be you know, for maybe the occasional game here or there, but you know, not really aimed specifically at like you know running the latest titles at high resolutions. But you could have them using fairly conservative memory, for example, GDDR3, or maybe a small amount of GDDR5 without too much difficulty. However, memory bandwidth is one of those things where you don't realize you're using it quickly. It's not just that textures are getting bigger. It's not just that 
resolutions are increasing, it's also that graphics cards themselves are doing so much more. And as shader complexity increases, as the number of actual processors on a graphics card increases, remember, let's say for the sake of argument, you might have 4096 stream processors, which are essentially a little mini uh, and to be honest with you, very powerful uh, CPUs. Each one is processing instructions at rather rapid speeds, and each one is taking orders from a, uh, I guess you could say, a governor, which is basically saying, hey, you need to schedule this, you need to schedule this, and all of them are working towards a common good. However, graphics cards, of course, are doing things not just like putting shadows and drawing textures there, now starting to do physics. They're now starting to help with artificial intelligence and whatever else in games, and that is just games. God help you if you're starting to do something like science applications. Essentially speaking, even low-end graphics cards for the future are gonna eat up memory bandwidth galore. Now, what we know is that Pascal, of course, is going to use HBM2. However, to give you a peek into the future, even Nvidia and AMD realize that the next next generation, so that isn't Polaris, that isn't Pascal, it's the generation after that, Volta. They're gonna use HBM2, and they're gonna put out about 1.2 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth. However, you might also recall that both Pascal and Polaris are also going to use about one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth. So there's only a difference there of, well, not very much really, is there? It's around 20%. Now, you might say to yourself, well, 20% is an awful lot. And particularly when you start to factor in other performance enhancements for memory, like, for example, they might have better compression techniques, so they might be able to do X, Y, or Z, or what have you. But realistically, there are problems with that. It means that just clocking the HBM2 uh, chips to push the extra 0.2 TBS means that you're going to use a ridiculous amount of extra energy. How much? Around 60 watts. Now, that doesn't sound much on a 300 watt P uh, GPU. But it starts to add up really quickly because the GPU itself, once again, is not going to remain stagnant. The more shaders you've got, the more drops, cache, clock speed, what have you, you start to eat up that power envelope. And it's going to be kind of crazy, to be honest with you. It really will be. And it's going to continue to increase and increase and increase. And this is why companies are still pushing new memory technologies. While HBM2 is certainly going to help in the meanwhile, it's great it exists, and GDDR5X once again is great in the meanwhile, and it is also great it exists, it's just a temporary stopgap as we forever march forward in the, uh, I guess you could say, the, uh, the seeking of the frames and the seeking of the performances. Realistically, however, the fact that Micron have managed to put out GDDR5X, at least so early, I mean, summer is actually kind of a decent spot considering when we expect the next generation of cards to come out, is a good thing because it means that once again, there should be, at least theoretically from my point of view, once again, whether these companies do that or not is a different thing, but it looks like there are going to be three distinct flavours of memory. There will be GDDR5, which would be the equivalent, and I'm just throwing this out there. Let's say, let's use the NVIDIA current lineup. So, for example, it might be the equivalent of the GTX 940s, the GTX 950s. They would probably use GDDR5, maybe even up to the GTX 960. Then you're certainly going to have the cards which are going to use the uh, 5X, which would probably be maybe the, G the GTX 960, the 970, and then of course, finally, the HBM2 uh, enabled cards, which would obviously be the 980, the 980 Ti, and probably the Titan is going to feature an ungodly amount of HBM2 from what we're hearing, 32 gigabytes. 
which is a lot of memory and also a lot of memory bandwidth. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.